This is a narco submarine, a stealth marine vehicle designed to transport drugs from South America to the US, and sometimes even Europe. Over the last decade, authorities have caught over 200 of these, but there are many more out there. Today, we will take a look at four different models, ranging from simple all the way to transatlantic high-tech. How do these submarines work? How do they avoid detection? And what does the Coast Guard do to catch them? There are many ways to smuggle cocaine into the high-profit markets of the US and Europe. Each year, authorities seize several hundred tons of cocaine before it reaches the streets, and many more tons get past them. In this game of cat and mouse, cartels constantly come up with new ways to deliver their product. At first, narco-subs were made for short trips, but over time, their production was professionalized. A hidden industry began to flourish. This is Oscar Moreno Ricardo. Colombian authorities named him the king of semi-submersibles. Here, deep in the dense Colombian jungle, hidden along a river, he operates a clandestine shipyard, far beyond the reach of authorities. In places like this one, Ricardo and his competitors build submarines. They can travel thousands of miles across the ocean, carrying tons of cocaine. These narco submarines are designed to remain hidden. But there are rare moments when we get a glimpse into their world. H.I. Sutton studies the craft of Ricardo and the others. He has dedicated his career to uncovering their secrets. He's a specialist in defense analysis and unconventional naval warfare. I've been looking at narco submarines for about 15 years and keeping a database of all the incidents of narco submarines and analyzing their designs and the trends that are evolving in that space. Now, let's dive into our first sub. This is a very typical narco submarine. They started to appear like this in the late 2000s and they're still being found today. It's roughly 14 meters in length and not a true submarine. Rather, it's a so-called low profile vessel. The top remains visible above the waterline. Its color blends in with the sea. Due to its low height, radar systems have a hard time detecting it. Currently, it is en route to Central America. Inside the cramped vessel, five men sit in tense silence. Every so often, the low hum of the diesel engine pulses through the hull as it pushes them forward at 16 km per hour. The sub is divided into three compartments. This middle is the crew area. It's sparse and uncomfortable. Bunks cramped tightly together, a single hatch above for entry. Here at the rear, the diesel engine roars, vibrating against the thin fiberglass walls. It is located behind the crew compartment so they can access it to do repairs. Up front, the cargo hold is tightly packed with bags of cocaine, 7.7 .7 tons to be precise. The crew uses the weight of the drugs, fuel and engine to keep the vessel low in the water. The cargo on board will earn the cartel a hefty sum, if the sub reaches its destination. A Marine Patrol aircraft spots the narco submarine and immediately alerts the US Coast Guard. Right now, they are operating in international waters. Two small boats and a helicopter race to intercept the vessel. Once within range, Coast Guard officers jump onto the ship and give the door a friendly knock. They capture the five smugglers along with the cocaine, valued at well over $200 million. If law enforcement had not acted so decisively, the smugglers could have opened the scuttling valve, a last resort mechanism that floods the sub and sends it plunging to the ocean floor along with all its evidence. This crew had a relatively short journey. Others travel half across the world.
While narco subs are obviously used for organized crime, their engineering and the ingenuity behind their design are undeniably remarkable. If you ever wanted to build your own skills in these areas, on the right side of the law of course, Brilliant is a great place to start. Their interactive lessons make it easy to learn new skills, whether it's physics, math, programming or artificial intelligence. Every lesson is engaging and playful. You can customize the content and work through the exercises and problems at your own pace. Take a short quiz when you sign up and you'll get content that matches your personal skill level and interests. With Brilliant's science lessons, you'll explore the physics of everyday life and dive deeper into the principles that submarines rely on. Scan this QR code or visit brilliant.org fern to try Brilliant for free for a full 30 days. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Start developing new skills today. A different part of the Amazon. A narco vessel departs near Manaus in Brazil and is making its way to Macapa, the Amazon's mouth. This semi-sub is over 20 meters long and nicknamed Che. Inside Che sit three men. Augustin Alvarez, a former Spanish boxer and captain of the vessel, and two Ecuadorian men. They are about to cross the Atlantic. Traveling at around 19 km per hour, they will cover roughly 6,500 km from the Brazilian rainforest all the way to Europe, with no GPS and only a compass to guide their way. It will take them about two weeks to reach the destination, if all goes according to plan. This Nako sub is very similar to our first one, but it is more modern and larger. It also has three compartments. You've got the engine in the back, the crew in the middle, and the cargo bay. Nearly half the sub's size is reserved for fuel. Three massive tanks holding 20,000 liters, ensuring the vessel can make the long journey. The men have no proper beds and use plastic bags as toilets. For food, they have the choice between energy bars, rice, or cans of sardines. There's only one proper seat, so two men must lie down at all times. The men endured three storms and almost hit a larger ship on the way, but finally managed to cross the Atlantic. But well, luck is not on their side. After 27 days, the sub runs out of fuel. The journey took twice as long as planned. Because of the conditions at sea, they can't deliver the drugs to another vessel. Two attempts to meet with cartel boats fail. As a last resort, Alvarez contacts old friends from his hometown Vigo and hopes to get help from them to unload the cocaine. But this also fails. So they travel near the coast of Galicia and sink the vessel. Afterwards, the crew wants to flee, but law enforcement has already spotted them. The EU's Maritime Analysis and Operations Center has notified Spain that a suspicious vessel is heading for their coast. They watched them using night vision goggles and observed their arrival in Galicia. Officials arrest the two Ecuadorian men shortly after the sinking. Alvarez can flee. He hides nearby in an abandoned house for five days and then finally gets arrested. Spanish police refloat and confiscate the sunken submarine. They find three tons of cocaine, worth around $100 million. Every time one of these gets caught, a cartel loses a lot of money. Reason enough to innovate. At first glance, this just looks like a real submarine. It has the typical cylindrical shape and is around 24 meters long. This build can almost fully submerge. Only a snorkel protrudes from its top, allowing the vessel to breathe drawing in air to cool its diesel engine and provide fresh oxygen for the crew. It also gives the vessel its name, the Snorkel Sub. Unlike most real submarines or, or most naval submarines, it's not built out of steel or metal, it's built out of fiberglass. A diesel engine powers the sub, while an onboard generator provides electricity for various systems, including a camera mounted atop the snorkel. So they always have an idea of what's around them when they're underwater. Ballast tanks allow it to take in water and dive deeper when danger is spotted. The interior feels cramped, yet sophisticated. There's a basic toilet and a sink. Small luxuries that make long journeys more bearable for the crew. The snorkel sub can haul up to 8 tons of cocaine, carrying its illicit cargo thousands of kilometers from Colombia to destinations like Mexico or beyond. 
So far, not a single one of these has ever been caught at sea. But we know they keep building them because the ones that we have got like this have always been captured on land. So we can infer from that that they must be very successful. And that makes sense. Patrol aircraft will have a much harder time spotting this sub. Through its camera system, it can maneuver around and evade Coast Guard ships with much greater finesse. The fact that such a complex machine gets built in a jungle in the middle of nowhere is remarkable. These shipyards are far from traditional supply chains or modern facilities. Narco submarines are designed and the construction is overseen by master builders. These are artisans, very technically proficient. They're impressive designs in the sense that while they might look very shoddy and minus, they really are the perfect example of the minimum viable product. These subs need to be good enough to reliably transport extremely expensive cargo thousands of miles. But at the same time, they have to be built with very basic materials. Not many people are capable of doing that. These master builders, there's only so many of them. And we can tell that because each designer, if you like, has signature. They, they have certain ways of solving problems that reveal themselves in the designs. And one of these builders far outshines the rest. In November 2020, law enforcement stumbled upon something extraordinary in the Colombian jungle. A fully submersible, 12-meter-long narco submarine. There's no fuel storage and no diesel engine in the back. Instead, the sub houses a whopping 10 tons of batteries, powering two electric motors. This is the peak of narco sub ingenuity. Construction costs roughly one and a half million dollars. Dive planes control the depth of the submarine. Its batteries have an estimated endurance of 12 hours. Traveling at five kilometers per hour, this sub could reach a travel distance of about 60 kilometers. This sub can travel neither fast nor far. But it doesn't have to. This vessel is not designed to make long journeys on its own. Do you see this little thing here? That's a towing ring. It can be attached to larger ships, allowing the narco sub to be pulled long distances undetected. When the smugglers reach their destination or Coast Guard appears, they simply unhook and continue on their own. This sub is extremely hard to detect. In fact, it has never been found in action. Authorities have only discovered this one example in the Colombian jungle. But there are most likely many more of them out in the waters. We can infer that it's incredibly successful, just like the other. All narco submarines are statistically successful, most get through. But these ones are even harder to find and has never, never been seen in the wild. This narcosub is proof that drug smugglers continue to design new, sophisticated vessels to move drugs into profitable markets. The trend has been towards smaller payloads, they carry less drugs than they used to, but there's more of them. And so it's really about optimizing their supply lines and getting the, the drugs to the market, minimizing the risks. When the sub completes its mission, it may end up here in a massive graveyard of narco submarines on the ocean floor. Because almost all of them are only built for a one-off trip. In 2022, the reign of Oscar Moreno Ricardo, the so-called king of narco submarines, came to an end. After years of eluding authorities, he was finally arrested in a joint operation by Colombian and American authorities. His capture marks a significant victory for law enforcement, but it is far from a decisive blow. Another worthy successor will most likely have already taken his place. Somewhere in the depths of the Colombian jungle, a new genius is already working on the next generation of narco submarines. More advanced, more sophisticated, and designed to beat the latest tactics of law enforcement.